Model Making Guru is sponsored by eModels.co.uk, your one-stop shop for all your model making needs. eModels.co.uk, make something awesome. Hey everyone, it's Fox from Model Making Guru here. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to part four. Four? Four, I think it's four. Is it three? No, it's four. Four, I think. If, if I'm wrong, I'll put it here. Um, but welcome to, I think, part four of the build of the Italeri 124th Mark II Transit for emodels.co.uk, knackered old tranny edition. Please add all jokes to the comments. Now, if you remember in the last episode, we got everything nicely rusted up, so it looks rather lovely. If a knackered, rusted hull of a van can look lovely. Uh, and I showed you a very simple way to do that. What we're gonna do today uh, is now, I, I, I know that I always say in the episode we are going to do X, Y, and Z, and then I invariably don't get time to do it all because I talk too much. Uh, or I do about 18 extra things that I didn't mention at the start. So tentatively, this, this may change, tentatively we're going to at very least get the base colour down everything in place for chipping base colour down and something special I'm going to be doing on this to make it customised uh, and make it kind of personal to me so uh, I know it sounds like I've planned and I have kind of done a bit of planning and it's not normal it's not normal for me to plan things I have available three little pots uh, I have available some other bits and bobs now we, I'm going to be mixing some custom stuff today. Uh, for the base colour for the paint, for the body, uh, I'm going to be mixing a custom colour. I'll either mix it in the paint pot or in one of those little jars. Uh, and depending how far we get today, uh, I will also be mixing some custom washes or even mixing some custom washes. I'm having trouble talking as usual. Hang on, I know what this requires. It requires my enormous cup of coffee. Oh, that's better. Sorry about that. Um, so yes, I'm going to make some some custom washes as well. Um, so we're going to see how that goes. We might not get time to do that, but we'll, we'll see. But we are going to definitely use a custom colour paint. So what is the plan? Well, first thing we need to do before we put paint on this or more paint on this to make it the colour it needs to be, we need to figure out how we're going to do the chipping. Now, I will tell you, because of what I've got planned, I'm not going to be doing salt chipping and I'm not going to be doing any kind of chipping fluid or hairspray chipping or any method that needs you to put paint on and then scrape it off with water or cocktail sticks or brushes to get that chip look. I thought about it a lot and I would love to do that, ideally, because it gives you some fantastic effects, but because of the special thing I've got planned, uh, it's going to involve brush painting. And I know, me doing brush painting. Um, and that means it'll probably be really hard to get that paint off if you use like a chipping fluid. When you brush paint, when you airbrush paint over chipping fluid, you can easily remove it. When you brush paint it on, doesn't always work. So I'm gonna to have to take a different tack today and I'm gonna go the simple route. Same way I showed you a really simple method for this, I'm gonna show you a really simple method to do chipping. And it couldn't be simpler, it's a two stage process basically, one of which I'll show you now. Uh, the first stage is simply masking fluid. This is Humbrol Mascol. Uh, other mask or masking fluids are available from emodels.co.uk, oops. Um, but I've used this for years, I love this stuff. It's got ammonia in it, so it's Stinks like a farmyard, it's horrible. So don't, if you're gonna be doing this on a big model, um, do take breaks. Now, I used, here's how cool this stuff is. You've seen my Ford Fiesta, I'll show you a picture in a minute. When we did that, when we painted that, because we, we completely repainted that and, and rat rodded it, we used, actually really used Humbrol Mascol. We had bottles and bottles of it, and we used this technique I'm gonna show you now on my actual car to create paint chips. And it's great. On full-size vehicles, it looks brilliant because you can do tiny little chips. Um, but we're going to do it in scale. So what you need is the mask hole, stinky stinky, and a really, 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 really cheap old brush. You can see here, it's not even much of a brush anymore. There was a big dot of, I used this just for masking fluid, there was a big lump of masking fluid, I had to yank it off, and that's what was left. You, you're never going to use this brush for anything else ever again. You may never use it after this, but it doesn't matter. Now you can also use, and I'll get some ready in case, you can also apply it with cocktail sticks if you want some really fine little dots. So, let me shut up and we'll crack on. I'll get everything ready and we'll do some masking. Right, so let's get cracking. So, to ward off any evil spirits and Tony style spinaches, I've got my uh, mask on a, a placemat with some big dot blue tack. Now, if you can hear a kind of farty noise out in the background, apologies, it's not me, 
for once, although I did have a lot of couscous the other night. Um, it's the police whizzing round. I don't know what they're doing. Maybe they've come to take next door's dog away because it never stops barking. Oh, it drives me nuts. Oh, it drives me nuts. <sighs> anyway, let's get this thing open. Oh, whew, there's that smell. There's that smell. For once, I haven't got a cold. I always have colds. For once, I've not got a cold, then I really <laughs> wish I had right now. It's not that bad. So this couldn't be simpler. And like most of my build videos, I always try and keep things nice and simple. But anyway, brush, Nacadol brush, mask all. Uh, and what we're going to be doing is basically blocking in areas where we want rust to be shown. So we're going to block in around the wheel arches and around the door jams and things like that on the bonnet. So we're going to use the brush for the big areas. And then what we'll do is we'll go back in with the cocking tail sticks for little finer areas. So first and foremost, let's just crack on with this. And I'm going to try and knock, knock, knock the camera because I always knock the camera with my space helmet of scene. So simply just dip your brush or device of paintage into the, where's it gone? I can't find the bottom of it, into the pot. And all we're going to do is quite simply block out where we want the rust to be. Now, when you first do this, it will look like ass because this is bright purple and you'll be like, oh God, that looks terrible. It won't look like anything in the world. It'll just look like a mess. And what I'm doing here is just concentrating around, hopefully it's on camera, concentrating around the areas where I've done damage, where there's obviously gonna be lots of rust. Uh, and what this is, it's basically a liquid latex solution. Uh, and it just prevents the paint from going on the, the rust. So when you have finished and you peel this off, and trust me, it's dead satisfying peeling it off, um, you're left with the rust showing through the paint. Uh, now you can be as messy or as neat as you like. And again, don't worry about getting tan little dots at this stage. This is all just about blocking in the large areas. Little tiny dots we can get to later with the cocktail stick. Are we on camera? Yes. We'll take a cocking gaffart and stale tail stick and we'll do some little tiny dots. Now this can be quite challenging because, well, I've just noticed actually, one thing you will find as well, I thought I had a lot more of this masking fluid. I'll have enough. It looks like my pot is half full, but when you stick the stick in, there's like an enormous bulb of solidified stuff in there. So yeah, always check how much you've got before you start on a job. So we get some paint on the cocktail stick and all I'm going to do is just dot it on. Now it can be quite challenging because it doesn't always go from the tips, so sometimes you have to angle it a little bit. It's good for edges. When you want to get paint on an edge like that, I hope I'm on camera, I can't actually see. If you want to get paint down a crisp edge, just use the side of the stick and it will, let's find a different bit, it will kind of go onto the edge quite nice. You don't want too much on there because it'll blob, but you can do it, you can use it to build up little spots and areas. And you can also use it to drag things if you want little spots. What you can do is you can take the stuff you've just put down and then just dot it and drag it out like that. And you'll get little strings and strands. And that's all I'm going to do. Uh, so I'm going to do this over the whole of the bo of the bodywork. Uh, I'm not going to do it under here because we've got a different plan for under there. But I'm going to do it on the, on the doors and the tailgate. I'm going to do it a little tiny bit on the inside here and I'm going to do a little tiny bit on the floor pan not too much just on the edges because what I'm trying to suggest is that obviously outside you've got all the rain and the crud and all the weather and you will get lots of rust there on the inside you're not really going to get that much rust like th like that because it's really just whatever water happens to get inside when somebody's loading or unloading cargo in the back so there will be little bits of rust where the paint scraped off and it's corroded a little bit but not too much um, so I'll go away and do that, and when we come back, we will start with the painting. So, probably take me about an hour or two to do all that, because I've got to be kind of thoughtful where I'm putting it, but when we come back, we'll get that done. So, back in a moment. Okay, right, the masking fluid is now dried. As you can see, it dries reasonably transparent. It's like a light purple, and that's what it looks like when it's dry. It takes about 10, 15 minutes. It doesn't take long at all. And you can see I've gone all over. I've not done any on the inside walls. Uh, I did a little bit on the inside of the door jams, all around the edges, uh, and I went all around the corners of the doors and where all the rust damage was. On the inside tailgate, I just did a little bit, uh, quite a bit there with the brush, and then a little bit here and there just to suggest chipping, because we're going to do some dry brushing and stuff later on in here. And there is going to be a second stage to the, to the paint chipping and the rusting, but that's going to be later on after the painting. So let's get on with the painting now. 
I said I was going to make some custom colours, and I have. Uh, I basically took a pot of, now, this is to me a medium blue, which I'll have to put the code number here, because as you can see, it's not actually called Gundam Blue Chip. That's just a custom mix. Okay. Mm. Uh, but what I did was, I took some uh, Sky Blue X14, and I mixed that in, and it gives you a colour like, let me get my little dibby stick, where's my little dibby stick? What you see on the lid? It gives you a colour like that which is lighter in real life, it appears on camera. Uh, now there's a very real reason I did this, and this is because I'm, I'm, I want it to be the same colour as my car. So I did a quick eyeball comparison, it's about right. If I remember rightly, it's it's actually a paint that you can't get in real in you know the model world called uh, Gulf Blue, which is made by a Volkswagen. It's an old 1980s colour, 1970s, 1980s. Get it on Mark One and Mark Two Golfs. So it's that kind of dull, but pleasant blue. I didn't just want to add white to the medium blue because that would just make it a pastel colour. I wanted to add blue just to blue it up and make it less dull. Uh, I thought about adding white, but I didn't. So that's the colour we're going to use. I've added, um, I, I can't give you exact amounts because I just eyeballed it, uh, but it was about this full with the medium blue. I added in, uh, a few, I don't know, I don't know how much I added, a few tips of that, and then the rest was just thinner, uh, ultimate airbrush thinner, uh, just to thin it a bit, ready for airbrushing. So I shall now go and get ready. I shall do the airbrushing. I'll do a voice air because you won't be able to hear me while I'm airbrushing anyway. So let me go and get that set up and we'll do some airbrushing back in a moment. Don't know why I'm doing that. Just, just stop. Okay, so here we are in the spray booth in Gefarten. Uh, now, as you see here, I'm uh, building up the color slowly. Uh, I didn't thin this paint much at all. I put a few drops in the paint itself when I was mixing it. Uh, and then I didn't put much in the paint after that once it was in the airbrush. Now, it does mean that it was a little bit struggling to spray it. I had my pressure at 15 psi to start with, and that was a bit feeble. So I put the pressure up to 20 psi, and it was still struggling a little bit, um, but that's fine. It's actually kind of what I wanted. You can see here, I've um, sort of done my light coats, now I'm focusing in the middle of panels. I'm almost doing like a, as if I've done pre-shading first kind of trying to get more in the middle of panels just to get some variation. And I'm lessening the amount of paint towards the bottom where it's gonna be most rusty. But I wanted it to struggle a little bit. I wanted the paint to be a bit too thick um, because I want to get a kind of slightly rough texture to the paint. Uh, my hope was that if it's struggling a bit, it might have dried a little bit by the time it hits the, the, the model and therefore it might be a little bit of a rougher texture. I want to suggest that kind of old paint uh, that's got corrosion underneath, so it's a bit rough, it's got some bubbling in places. Obviously we're going to have exposed parts of rust, but there'll also be bits of paint on old cars where there's rust underneath the paint, but the paint hasn't come off yet. Uh, and it might not work. Um, I had a quick look and it looks a little rough, but it's hard to tell until I take the masking fluid off uh, what's just masking fluid under the surface and what's actually just slightly rough paint. I did get a very rough texture on the inside roof, bizarrely, for, I don't quite know why, but I did. Uh, but you can see here, I'm just building, I'm not slapping it all on a massive coat, I'm just building it up as light mist coats. Because this is, a, to me, a paint, unlike the MIG paints, you don't have to build it up in several misty thin coats, although it's always advisable to do so. Uh, you could just slap this on, but I'm building up slowly, um, just so I can, I can get some kind of grades and shades, so some areas will be darker. Uh, it's the kind of effect, I'm, I'm looking to simulate the kind of effect you get when you use a chipping fluid and you, you're scrubbing it back with the brush, you get some kind of fading and shading, or well, you get that with the salt technique. I obviously haven't used those methods, so I need to try and get some darker and lighter areas, some patchiness. Now when it actually came out, I did get a bit carried away and it came out mostly blue. The patchiness wasn't that extreme. Uh, but this was it, I did the rest of the outer, I nearly said outer hull then, I'm too busy building spaceships. <laughs> uh, the rest of the bodywork like this. Uh, and we shall head back now and see how we got on and start the next step. Okie dokie, right, the blue has now been painted. I've been handling this a little bit, so some of it has rubbed off the masking fluid. Um, but so that's the blue painted. I've just temporarily stuck the doors on. And you can see, uh, it looks quite cool. I deliberately uh, left the paint a little thick because I wanted it to be uneven. The idea of this van is I want it to look like somebody's had a go at painting it themselves and not done a very good job. So that's what I'm gonna make it look like. So the paint is a little bit rough, which is fine. Um, but yeah, I tried to vary it slightly with different patches here and there, you know, different patches of darkness and lightness, just to give it some variation. So it does look a bit patchy. It looks like a terrible spray job, 
but once you've rubbed off all this masking fluid it's going to look awesome and, and weathered and then there's much more to do on top of that however now for the next step the next step is how to make this basically inarguably mine uh, and the way we're going to do that is this <laughs> yeah i'm putting a shark mouth on it uh, we're going to be adding the shark mouth i've just i did this one on this side just to make sure i knew what i was doing um, it's all brush painted basically was just using uh, red white and black tamiya paints uh, now they are a pig to brush but if you thin them just right you can kind of get a nice mix so they are a little bit brush marky but i'm not too fussed uh, because there's going to be lots of chipping under here anyway do it on camera dear lots of chipping anyway and then loads of weathering on top so you're not going to notice the brush marks so it's it's not very brush marky but it's a bit brush marky but that's fine because so we're going to cover it up with all kinds of crud and nonsense so yep so we're going to do this it's all freehand uh i'll show you how i did it basically what i did was i roughly sketched it out uh on the side i've got i've done one here i've sort of pre-drawn it so it comes down to about here uh, and that one is kind of like like that so it's kind of there it's hard to really pin it down i do know that not that both sides are going to look completely different they're not going to look the same but that is fine i'm absolutely fine with that that kind of goes there like that so i just need to keep that in mind they're going to look totes different but that's fine again i want to kind of give this idea that somebody did this themselves and they didn't do a very good job so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take ourselves a uniposca paint pen now the guys at e-models tell me either they should have these or they are about to start getting these in these are water-based paint pens but forget your sharpies and your other highlighters and markers these are really opaque paint water-based paint and they're brilliant you can draw on just about anything uh, and what I did was on here I painted all this did the outline painted it all in and then went back over the outline with the pen just to smooth everything off so these things are brilliant now this is very nervous making because this can go horribly wrong or horribly wrong so I can just about see the shine so I'm just going to do a very rough line here kind of like that just so I know where I'm painting it's not quite the same a bit a bit further down that's fine so it's more like that that's cool and then for this bit we want to join that up so I know it goes from are we on camera yeah I know it goes from about the front here up to about here and then it kind of no it needs to go higher than that you idiot there we go so it comes higher down and then it comes down here like that and down to the jaw the bottom of the mouth that's fine i'm going to neaten this up so what we're going to do is the first thing we're going to do is paint the black and this is the really bad way to do it but this is the way i did it do the black first <clears throat> then the red and then the teeth now the worst thing you can do in your life is paint white over anything basically apart from the white or gray but hey that's what i did there was no other way for me to do it i didn't want to do any masking or anything like that <clears throat> excuse me because if i do any masking i'm going to pull up all the masking fluid so yeah so it took about three three coats and a thin coat to get that white looking fairly opaque so that's my lines uh it's looking about right it's not they're not going to be exactly the same and i'm not going to be so rivet country that i'm worried about it um so all i'm going to do now is fill in the black and then do the red and then do the white so i'll probably do a time lapse because it's going to take me about an hour and a half to do it because it's all painstaking work and going over your work to correct it so i'll probably do time lapsey uh, and we'll see what happens on the other end back in a moment
Right, okay, so that's been done. That was great fun. The the one I painted on camera for you guys was the sec obviously the second one I did, and it went a lot easier than this one. This one took about an hour. That one took about 25, 30 minutes, uh, purely because I suddenly realised there's nothing stopping me painting the white first. On this, I painted the black first, and I had to do work the white over with loads of coats, and it's a bit brush marky. On this side, it's much smoother. Uh, I suddenly realised I can just paint the white in and just, you know, do the black on top, so brilliant. Uh, I did do a second shade on the tongue, but it doesn't really come out. comes out more on that side. And that was just the, the red with a little bit of the black added, just a tiny bit. But there you go. Now it looks like, kind of looks a bit like ass, but that's because it's got all the masking fluid underneath. So, And it looks weird because it's nice and bright and everything else is kind of faded. But that's, that's going to be faded once all the weathering goes on and once you've got some chipping going on. So yeah, that was pretty good, pretty good fun. Uh, you do have to really look at the, the thinning for those paints. You can get some nice smooth effects, but I can't tell you the exact ratio. I kind of just winged it and it just happened to work. Um, what I found was I had a little thing of thinner to one side, one of these little things, just using standard, not this stuff, because that's my brush wash, but X20A. Um, and what I had to do was kind of treat it like a water-based paint. I had to have some paint on the palette and work with that. And then every now and then just dip the brush in the thinner and just mix them in. Uh, like you would with an acrylic that you can mix with water just keep wetting the brush and getting it in so that way you can kind of get nice thin paint because uh, if you're trying to get brush mark free paint work really the trick is to keep the paint thin not thick and Tamir is the worst paint in the world to brush with so yeah uh, your mileage may vary you may have better if you're doing this yourself or anything like this and brush work you may have better results with water based paint so there you go anyway that's been done so before the next step, uh, which we'll get to, this is the fun bit. This is where we get to take the, the masking fluid off. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take the doors off. They're just taped in place. They're just loosely taped in place. Just get those off. Dee -dee -dee. This is the bit I enjoy the most. I love this bit. This is just pure fun. And no matter how careful you are, there'll always be a bit of masking fluid left over. And it's usually when you're taking a photograph after you finish the whole model and you'd be like, snap, 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 look at it on the computer, you post it on Facebook. Oh, there's a big chunk of masking fluid. Now, there's a num number of ways you can do this. Um, you can just rub it off with your thumb. You can, if you want, use a, an eraser, normal pencil eraser. I'm just going to use my thumb. So what you do is literally this. And it doesn't come off. Okay. It doesn't always work with your thumb. That's what we'll do. Let's, let's go on. On this side because this was the more hassled side. Let's use the pencil eraser. I'm going to be gentle because I don't want to take off any paint, obviously. Although, if I did take off some paint somewhere, it wouldn't be an end of the world because it would just show the rust underneath. Uh, you could use a cocktail stick if you just had a little bit of masking, but because there's so much masking fluid on here and there's so many little bits that I can't quite see, I need to make sure I'm getting all of it. So, this is going to take me a while because there's quite a lot. But what you'll see is this is why I couldn't use like chipping fluids or anything like that. It's because I couldn't guarantee if I was using a chipping fluid that when I came to, you know, remove the paint like you do with a chipping fluid, you brush it off with a wet brush, just wet it with water. I couldn't guarantee that this paint wouldn't be so thick that it wouldn't actually work. The chipping process wouldn't be a complete failure. And then I'd have basically a painted model and no way to get these kind of chips and I'll just paint the chips on and I want to try and avoid that if I can as a sole way of doing chips I'm going to be painting on some chips later but this is just the initial initial chippage now the other thing as well is and I'm, not, I'm not going to do this but if you want it to have that kind of effect where you have bubbled paint where the rust hasn't shown through yet just leave the chipping fluid there because look at that might not show on camera but it looks like paint that's bubbled but not yet peeled off so all that hard work on that shark mouth. Oh, if you're wondering, by the way, why I've done a shark mouth, here's a picture of my car. Now you know why I've done a shark mouth. <laughs> yeah. So, what was I saying? Yeah, this is the fun bit, taking off the masking fluid. Now it does take a while. Hey. So how are you guys? How have you been? How's tricks? Uh, uh, lots of new things in the e-model store do remember do remember to go and check out what's available they've got the new um, ammo have partnered with I think Tacom I'm not 100% sure because I've not got it in front of me I think it's Tacom they partner with and they've done some sort of limited edition uh, tank kits 
uh, which are both which are kind of a partnership between Ammo by Mig Jimenez and I think Tacon. Uh, and they're like unique kind of kits and they're really cool. They've got some in stock, so well they did have when I was filming this. So make sure to go along to emodels.co.uk and check stuff out. I'm just trying to fill space now, aren't I? While I'm talking while I'm doing this. Let's see what's happened to my beautiful, beautiful shark mouth. This is where I cry now because all that hard work just gets destroyed. I made sure that these paints have dried, by the way. I've left them quite a while to make sure they're fully cured and dried. You need to make sure everything's dry. If you start pulling this stuff off while paint's still not fully cured, you're just going to make a mess. And you'll have a sad factory scenario. The good thing is, as well, because I'm using this eraser, it will also, hopefully, dull this paint down a bit and make it less garish. Now there will be some little bits of masking fluid that I just can't get off at all and what I'll do is I'll go in with a cocktail stick right at the end and just start picking away at them. Uh, there are, it can be quite clingy and it pays to just like take your time and when you think you've finished just go over with your magnifying visor or some way of looking up close the magnification and just double check because you will find bits that you haven't seen. So anyway I'm sure you've had enough of watching me take off masking fluid. It's very relaxing. It's like the lazy man's way of being creative because there's no real creativity involved, but you're creating this creative thing. It's great. It's like pressing a button and everything gets done for you. So I'll go and get the rest of the uh, the bodywork done. Uh, and then when we come back, we shall uh, move on to the under area, the seamy underbelly, and start making that look like road used old car or old vehicle. So. I'll go off and continue rubbing quietly in the corner and I shall see you in a moment. Okay, right, all the rubbing off has been done as you can see now. It looks a bit more rusty. Yeah. Now, at this stage, if you're making your own rusty vehicle and using these same methods, at this stage, your brain will be going Ah, it doesn't really look like doesn't doesn't really work. It's not it doesn't make sense, and it it doesn't. Right now, it looks like a blue van with some brown spots on it and a and a shark mouth obs. Um, don't worry because there's a lot more to do with the rust. We've got the painty painty stage to come. Uh, we've got probably some dry brushing of oil paints, and there are going to be washes and things that go over this that will collect in some of the recesses and dark and things, and you'll get different tones. So right now, yes, it looks a little weird, but this is normal. Uh, this will change over time, so that's now been done. I'm quite pleased with that. My poor shark mouth, I've spent minutes painting that, and that's oh, do all this work, and then it just goes away. Right, next bit. Uh, next bit is to do some magic down here on the un seamy underbelly. Now, we need to do a, a wash to darken things up. Before we do that, we need to paint a couple of details. Uh, and what I need to paint are the mufflers. I'm not going to paint the exhaust sort of tubes, the pipes themselves, because go and look under an old car, they're always made of rust. But these, I think, are aluminium or stainless steel or something. So these, they're not stainless steel, but they tend to take a lot longer to rust. So we might give these a bit of a benefit of doubt and initially put some metal shade on here. We'll go over it again with dirt and rust and other things later, but initially we need to just get a base colour. I also want to paint the engine block. Now, the back of the engine block I didn't really rust, and it's kind of a dark colour, which is fine. The front of it isn't, and I need to darken that. So we're going to go over the, that as well. Over the exhaust uh, mufflers, we're going to go over with some good old AMIG 191 steel. And over the engine part here, we're going to go with some satin black. It's the only black I've actually... Well, it's not the only black I've got, but... If you look at a new engine, it's got that kind of slight satiny look to the black paint. So we're going to do that, and then we're going to obviously weather the living carp out of it. So it'll get mucky and dirty, and you probably won't see this. But we'll start with this, a reasonable colour. So we'll do the steel first. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, there's not much paint left in there. I need to get a new one of these. Oh. Right, so for this, we are going to use uh, my traditional classic big fat dry brush. Those have asked, it's a De La Rowney Graduate Flat Shader. is my preferred dry brush brush for uh, dry brushing, strangely enough, metallics, silvers and things. Um, I don't know if e models will have it. It's more of an art brush than a model making brush, um, but they are really, really good. So if you, if, you, if you can't find them, go look in the art shop. They're brilliant. So dry brushing, you know how this works. You know 
how this works. We have the tissue that blows the white balance, which is why everything's really dark. We get the paint on the brush, which is just off to the side, so you can't see it. Well played, Fox, well played. And then we take most of the paint off on the tissue. Now we're going to dry brush. I could just paint this, but I don't necessarily. I'm not going to leave it particularly silver anyway. So I'm just going to. I'm just going to tint it and give it the colour of a bit more. Actually, I think. Because remember, this is going to be old. It's not necessarily going to be brand new with an old exhaust actual pipe on it. And to be honest, to give the sort of look of a rusty, battered old muffler, this can actually be all you need to do. Now I've got some on the tube there, but that's fine. I can go over it with something else later. That's not a problem. But this will get more weathering and rusting. So if it does have some, you know, over metal bits on it, that's fine. But that already looks like kind of an old muffler. It's a bit bright and shiny still, but that will change. But that is kind of literally all I need to do on there. It's just to pick it out. I'm not worried about going on, like they say, the exhaust pipe itself anywhere else, because trust me, this is going to get lost in all the crud we're going to put on it. So that's going to do for there. Uh, I don't need to put it anywhere else. I'm not going to bother about the wheel rims, because I think I might actually put the tyres on this. So we're not bothered about them. You're not going to see them anyway, the, the rim parts here. Everything else uh, is going to be covered in dirt and crud and horribleness. So I'll just give them a brush a quick clean. But that's all I need to do. That's it. Now, if I was doing a lightly rusted, a lightly weathered vehicle, sorry, cleaning my brush. If you were doing a lightly weathered vehicle, that would probably look fine, actually. Give it a matte coat and a bit of a wash to get some darkness in the creases, in the folds. It would be brilliant. And I'm hoping it comes out on camera. I know everything's a bit dark, but it's because the, the white tissue, uh, it kills the white balance. Uh, but yeah, that's all I need to do. Now, I know things like the fuel tank traditionally is the shiny black like parts of the engine. Uh, the chassis frame is typically the same colour as the body. So it wouldn't be the blue that we've painted the van because the idea is that somebody's painted this themselves. So it will be a colour, red, white, whatever. Um, but again, we're going to cover it in so much crud and road grime and nonsense that you're not going to see it. So next is the satin black. <laughs> Now, I have been practicing, I have been practicing my brushing skills. You saw me doing some brushing earlier on, I did the shark now. It's not often I have to do brush painting unless it's a figure. Um, but over the last few days, I've been doing, uh, I've been working on a, a, a Warhammer model. And it's all brush painting. So, yeah, and that's really good fun. And uh, it's just allowed me to sort of hone my painting skills a bit. I'm going to have to put my space helmet on. So forgive me if my helmet comes into, my visor helmet comes into view. Oh, did you see the head cheese on the rim there? Ew, ew, I won't say that again. So we're going to be only a light coat on here if it's on camera. Again, I'm not too fussed. Oops, not actually coming out at all. I'm not really too fussed about the neatness or smoothness of this level, of this layer. Because, again, this is going to get lost under dirt, dankness road grime um maybe not rust because if you look at an old engine block certain parts of the engine block are rusty like the you know the manifold gets rusty and certain parts of the block but there are certain parts that just they don't seem to get rusty or if they do they've got so much like grease and oil on them that you never see the rust anyway and typically under a, under an engine there's me knocking the camera I told you i do that uh, typ typically, there's so much grease and stuff that they just look dark and black. So I'm not too worried about getting nice, neat edges between this piece. Is that the sump or is it actually, I don't know if it's the sump or what? I know you can't see this bit. Uh, quite a nice crisp edge there. I'm not really worried if I've not got a neat edge there and there because, again, this is just, it's fluff. You're not actually going to see this really, but I want to put it there just so it's there. It's the groundwork. Uh, okay, so and that concludes the brush painting on the underside. That's it. That's all we need to do. Literally, that's all we need to do because there's going to be so much on here. It's going to be fun, messy times. Now, what I need to do is let that dry just for a little bit, and when we come back, uh, we're going to do a wash. 
okay right now for the next step that's all dried now the next step i have mixed myself a special concoction of stuff what is this stuff well um i could use i thought about using something like tamir smoke but i'm going to use tamir smoke on the bodywork uh, because it's a particular color and it works really well for dirt and grime and dust um i want something that suggests because we're going to have like earth and dirt and stuff on here anyway but i want something that suggests that kind of if you look under a car it has that it all looks black underneath the, the sort of light dusty colors it kind of looks black or dark color it's not necessarily black but like a very dark gray just using say a flat black wash say some of the you know uh, tamir or an ammo uh, acrylics can't get my words out today um it would look fine but black would be too stark i don't want that it's a kind of muted gray dark gray kind of thing and it also has a certain patina to it, a certain matteness uh, now the one thing that gives you a really good matte finish more often than not are enamels so uh, i haven't got any enamel paints what i have got is a load of uh, the ammo by mig enamel washes uh, panel line washes and streaking grimes so what i've done is i can't give you the exact ratios because again I, as i always do i winged it started off with some uh, panel line wash blue black which is on its own is fine but it's not thin enough i want it really thin um and i've got some streaking grime and some engine grime i just basically mix these together mostly with the panel line wash blue black uh, and then what i want to do is i want it to if you just use a normal paint it will probably tint everything and then really collect and give you large black areas I don't want it to do that. I want it to strongly tint the, the, the surface. It's kind of hard to explain. Strongly tint it and collect in the recesses, but not be overpowering. Um, and what I tried uh, earlier on today, it worked quite well in a little experiment, is taking these panel line washes, and instead of using thinners to thin them, I used lighter fluid. You know, like you sell at your local corner shop, you get the refill tins of lighter fluid. It's, it's still a petroleum spirit type product, so it's not that much different from odorless turpentine and things like that but it just has a certain quality to it it's, a, it's not sticky or gloopy but it kind of it changes the way the paint behaves a little tiny bit it, your mileage may vary maybe i'm just lucky in the tin of lighter fluid that i got um but it just has this certain effect you'll see when it's done anyway but this is this is i've been doing some experiments and this is as close as i've got to it and this is a good way of doing your own kind of washes so if you want something a little different uh, and the other thing about enamels, like I say, is they're very matte. I'm not sure I want a matte finish. So, what we're going to do, we've got the wash, which I'm calling, I don't know, not Starship Filth. There you go. <laughs> uh, and I've just got a brush. Any brush will do. I'm using a big flat brush just for the sake of speed. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch it to my anti Tony spillage device because I will spill it. I haven't got any lids for these little pots anymore. I've lost them all. It's like, oh. And I've put some tissue and newspaper down because this will get messy. Yeah, so I'm just going to load the brush completely. And then I'm simply, you know what I'm going to say? I'm going to slap it on. I'm going to slap it on. I'm not caring about anything. I am literally, there is slapping going and the slapping, the direction of the slapping is on. Now it looks at the first like I'm painting everything black, but what you'll find is as it dries, it kind of settles down into all the dips. It will tint the surface very nicely, um, but it will also, it just looks like black paint right now, but trust me when it dries, it will look completely different. And I'm, I'm dead chuffed with this mix that I got because it's, Similar to a number of different products that I actually like using. Um, and it's just if ever I run out of something, of these products that I use, there's various ones that I like. You know, you, I love my Starship filth and other things. But if I ever run out, I know at least I can make a reasonable analogue with this. Probably never get this exactly the same mix. I might go for a smaller brush for these little recesses. Let me get something more traditional. Uh, let's go for, for my shade brush. There we go. So I can get it in there, in the recesses. Uh, now it looks quite stark now, but trust me, I'll say when it dries, it will completely change. Uh, and this is kind of what I want anyway, because there is a lot more weathering to come. Don't worry about the fact it's suddenly going to look black, because trust me, like I said before, a lot of this will disappear under dust and and engine grime and stuff that we're going to spray on later on. Uh, and the 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 ethic for underneath this vehicle 
really is I don't care just spray it just cover it because this is supposed to be a van that's you know let's say 10 15 20 years old it's had an active life it's absolutely knackered some idiots painted painted it blue and put a shark mouth on it and then left it to rust and rot so it's not it's not been loved or rather it's, it's been loved but not necessarily <clears throat> maintained so yeah so there'll be a lot of dirt and dust the only time anybody is seasoned underneath here is when it goes for its MOT and that's usually when the guy just sits there and goes <sighs> and the owner just gets his wallet out and cries a little bit it's like me with my car you see I, my little fiesta I love my little fiesta I absolutely adore it bigger, bigger. it's just a fiesta but since painting that shark mouth on it of course I really hope I don't actually ever you know, crash it and require body work because yeah, I'm never getting that painted on there again. That was uh, that was the benefit of my last job and having access to a spray spray body shop and uh, someone who could help me do it. It wasn't actually my idea, but it was a brilliant idea. Um, and it was completely free. That will never happen again. So yeah. But you know, my little Fiesta. I will. I don't care how much it costs. When it went for its last MOT, it was about six hundred quid because it needs some welding done. And I'm like, six hundred quid. The car isn't even worth six hundred quid. But you know what? I'm going to pay it because I love my little Fiesta so much because of the shark mouth and because it's just awesomeness um, that I can't bear to part with it and have a boring normal car again. And I will do it at some point. I'll have to. Right. So that's that on. In it messy. It's well messy, that is. It's well messy. Yeah, now that probably just looks black to you, and it looks black to me. But like I say, as it dries, it will change. It'll still look dark and black, uh, but it will just look more... Well, you, you'll see. There's, there's, I can't really explain it. And you watch now, it'll just it'll mock me, and it'll just come out completely different, and it'll look terrible, and I'll be like, oh, I was not supposed to do that. So we'll see how it comes out. As, I might need a second coat. I don't know yet. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it dries. Uh, if it dries all right and it comes out looking exactly as I want it to look then we're done uh, but If it needs a second coat, I'll give it a second coat. I won't show you that obviously uh, So when we come back, I will show you how we've done so I'm Back in a moment. I'm all messy now. I made a right mess made a, made a right mess. Mum, I've made a mess again. Oh, sorry Okay, everything is now dried and as you can see, you can see what I was talking about now, the kind of effect I was looking for. Uh, it's had about, well, it's had overnight to dry. I'm going to leave it longer because it's an enamel, obviously, but it's dry enough for me to film now. And you can see here, it's all lovely, lovely, lovely. That's not a very good pointy stick. It's black and everything's dark. Have I got a lighter? I'll use my, I'll use my dibby stick. There you go. My little mixing thing. You can see now it's nice and dark and matte and there's a few shiny bits here and there, but that's where I've just missed parts and it's shining from underneath, the paint underneath. But that's the effect I was looking for. Like you can see on here, it's darkened it down. It's not really changed the colour too much. You can still see the metallic twinge on the edge and things. This looks lighter than the background. But it's just kind of given it that road grimy muck layer. And that's why I wanted to use the enamels. Primarily because of the, the matte qualities. Uh, and primarily because of... That's not even a real word. Tony, you've broken my speech centres. I'm talking like Tony now. Primarily, primarily, I don't know. I'll give up. I quit. Yes, you can see on here, for example, going back into English mode, um, it's kind of gathered around the edges of that recess, so it's dark, but it's also tinted the inside as well. But you do get the difference between the two. Now, you could get the same effect with acrylics. I'll be honest, just thinning down, you know, an acrylic uh, matte black or mixing up your own little colour that's just off black. I didn't want pure black for this. This is kind of off black, it's dark grey. Um, but the thing I found with acrylics is more often than not it will either just make the whole piece really dark and black which is not what I wanted or you'll just get nothing in the middle and a stark black edge which fades a little bit but not as well as that and that's why I didn't just want to go down for thinning acrylics um, and like I said before I wanted to use the enamels I wanted this kind of road grimy dark colour and this has come out absolutely perfect so if you've never tried it before try mixing your own stuff uh, rather than just using stuff from the bottle uh, see what you can come up with I say I did use lighter fluid uh, and I, I don't know if that makes a difference at all it's, I just tried some experiments and it seemed to come up with the result I wanted so 
Uh, I use that instead of my usual uh, odorless thinner for oil paints, which you can use for enamels. But if you've got some odorless thinners for oil paints, or you've got, if you're using stinky, stinky white spirit or stinky, stinky terps, I really would recommend odorless enamel thinners or odorless oil thinners. It's the same thinners for enamels and oils. Um, so you can you can mix and match if you can go for some odorless stuff. Um, the ammo stuff's quite good. The models have that in stock. But yeah, that's absolutely perfect. So that's that bit done for now. I'm not going to do any more weathering on the chassis until we've got to the point where this can be permanently installed. This is just loosely fitted so you can see the whole thing in context. They see these rust patches make a bit more sense now. You've got the actual chassis on there. Now there is a lot more to do on these rust patches. This isn't how it's going to look when it's finished. These, this is just blocking in the main areas. But it, it starts to make a bit more sense. My poor shark mouth. <laughs> it looked brilliant, now it looks knackered. <sighs> but yes, there's lots more everything to go on here as well. But what I'm going to do, there'll be things like pastels, uh, possibly some oil washes, I'm not sure. But things like pastels, uh, pigments. I've got an idea for th the caked on dirt we're going to get in the wheel arches and around the edges. Never tried it before, but I've got a plan for that and we'll see if it works. Uh, but I'll do that once the chassis is permanently installed. So once the the, yeah, the, the cab has been built and everything else uh, and painted up. Because when I do the weathering on this chassis, so when I do the weathering on the, on the bodywork, I'm not bothered about the chassis because it'll be like streaking and chipping and things like that. So I can do that with the bodywork off. When I do the chassis, I need to make sure that there's a consistency between all the dirt and dust and grime that goes on here and any of that that would naturally creep up onto the bodywork. Things like, you know, road grime and spray grime and stuff like that. Anything spraying up the sides needs to be contiguous. I love that word. I got that word from watching The Next Generation. And I always want to use it, contiguous. Um, you know, if you've got dirt and dust down here, it needs to be the same dirt and dust on the side of the van. So if I do these separately, the chances are I'll make this look brilliant, this look brilliant, put them together and they won't, they won't have any consistency, they won't, it'll look different. So I need to do those bits when we've got all done. All done. So the next time I come back to this will be when we've got everything built in. Um, I'm kind of hoping I can get the tyres on. Now I've actually installed it all, or, you know, put the wheels on the axles. Uh, I am going to have the tyres on. I still haven't figured out the best way to do a flat tyre look yet. I might not even do that. I might just make it out like he's just put new tyres on it. Because it's going to be done up like it's for sale. Um, so it might be that the, the owner's stuck new tyres on it and therefore, brilliant, you can ignore all the rust because it's got new tyres. So we'll, we'll see. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for this episode, I think. Uh, yeah, coming along nicely. Uh, as always, thank you so much for watching. We'll, we'll catch up with more stuff in the next episode. Do, if you get a chance, do pop along to their website. Have a look. They have a massive range of products. Um, paints, models, uh, kits, obviously. Obvs. Uh, some brilliant kits. Um, lots of specialisation in things like armour. If you're into armour, they've got the 116 scale tanks. They've got everything you can imagine. They've got a big range of Tacom and Meng and things like that. They've even got they've even got the the one thirty fifth scale Dora rail gun. I've seen it on the shelf in the in the warehouse. It's massive. Yes, yeah, it's, it's certainly an epic model kit. No, I'm not going to build it. <laughs> it wouldn't fit on my desk. So no, I'm not going to be doing the uh, I'm not going to be doing the Dora rail gun. There's an ongoing joke between myself, Ted, and Tony who do the video three models every time we're going to do a new project three models. I, uh, I always, you know, we always joke and say, right, which one of you is going to get the Dora next? <laughs> I don't think Pete, mate, would uh, survive giving us one of those to build. Anyway, enough waffle. Go along to their store, check it out. Like I always say, if they haven't got it, you don't need it. And what I mean by that is, if you're looking for a specific thing and e-models don't have it in stock or they don't carry it, then they'll have something else that's just as good. Like I did with the wash on this. There was one thing I wanted to use, but it's something that e-models can't stock. So... I improvised, came up with something I was using stuff they do stock, the uh, ammo enamels. Brilliant, perfect. So if they haven't got it, you don't need it. But yes, go along, check it out. Go along to the Facebook page as well, facebook.com forward slash emodelsltd. Brilliant little community. There's 20 billion people on there, all sharing pictures of their works, helping each other out, asking questions. Uh, and obviously they'll keep you in touch with like new offers, things that are coming into stock. Uh, things that are coming up on you know offers and things like that and things that are in stock now that you might want to go and pick up um, and they also keep you updated on the live stream skipper ted 
uh, does his little live stream every week and I often take part in that as well and that's usually jolly good fun and you can come along and join in the comments and that'll keep you updated as to when that's going to be so go along and of course don't forget to check out my stuff I'm model making guru on YouTube and Twitter and Facebook uh, come along and check me out but again thank you so much for watching stay tuned for the next one go make something awesome and until next time adios amoebas Bye.